the temporary Seurhof Bridge sailed on a pontoon construction through Rotterdam, the Netherlands, to the Moskwa. An interesting job because of the various techniques, equipment and requirements that had to come together in the project. Special TV is a TV channel with video reports about special transport, heavy lifting, special equipment, and trucks. On the night of Sunday 9 to the 10th of May, the temporary Suahof Bridge sailed on a pontoon construction by Hebo Maritime Service and Van der Wees Transports through Rotterdam, the Netherlands, to the Maasvlakte. The port of Rotterdam is the largest seaport in Europe and the largest outside of Asia, located in the city of Rotterdam in the province of South Holland in the Netherlands. The Van Brienen Oord Bridge, where the A16 is running, one of the Netherlands' busiest motorways. The bridge dates from 1965. The Van Brienen Oord Bridge is offering great views over the skyline of Rotterdam. In the spring of 2021, an arch bridge of approximately 200 meters long, 20 meters wide and 40 meters high, crossed the water for 40 kilometers to its temporary destination. For the water transport of the bridge, the bridge was first driven onto the pontoon construction by Momot, using SPMTs. These are modular trailers that have been developed to be able to transport and place heavy and special objects. The temporary bridge was built by steel manufacturer Hollandia Infra, in Krimpen aan de IJssel, the Netherlands. The 53,200 square meters site is equipped with fully automated modern production halls, 26,000 square meters, the latest tools, laser and paint facilities, storage space. Because of the location by deep water, Vast constructions can be loaded using Hollandia's private docks and roll-on, roll-off ramp. During the preparation, it was examined whether the bridge could also be built near the final location. The contractor ultimately decided that this would have been too complex. Too many measures would then have had to be taken to prevent damage to cables and pipes. For the weight of the bridge, Kibo Maritime Service opted for the P-41, a pontoon from their own collection and the LD-25, which was hired from Van der Wees Transports. De Hef, since 1927, is a national monument and one of the icons of Rotterdam. The former bridge official name is Koningshavenbrug, that had once a railroad connects Norderayland with the neighborhood Feigenoord. Koningina Bridge. The bridge connects the Norderayland with the Feigenoord district. The first Koningin Bridge was a swing bridge that was built in 1870.
P-41 has a length of 75 meters, a width of 17.5 meters and a depth of 4 meters. The load capacity is 15 tons per square meter. The last Trigger 25, LD-25, from Van de Wees has a length of 60 meters and a width of 20 meters. The maximum load of this pontoon is 3,000 tons. Erasmus Bridge is a combined cable stayed and bascule bridge. Construction began in 1986 and was completed in 1996. It crosses the Niwa Mass in the center of Rotterdam, connecting the north and south parts of this city, second largest in the Netherlands. According to Henk Muhlendijk, project manager temporary connection Suahof Bridge, the construction site for the bridge was chosen because parts could then be built in the Hollandia Infra factory, and because that location has the best conditions for building bridges as well as the adjacent construction site, where the bridge could be built safely. Rijkswater Star is part of the Dutch Ministry of Infrastructure and Water Management and responsible for the design, construction, management and maintenance of the main infrastructure facilities in the Netherlands. The pontoons are connected by a spacer barge. This had the practical benefit that, in this way, the employees were able to reach the other pontoon. Hebo had placed four 20-inch containers on the side of pontoon P-41 for extra buoyancy and stabilization of the transport. Because the spacer barge was anchored crosswise with coupling winches to the main pontoons, a hard connection was created, and it was considered as one unit by the sea fastening calculation. The Botlik Bridge is a lifting bridge for road and rail traffic over the Oud Maas in the Rotterdam port area. The bridge was opened in 1955 and was replaced in 2015 by a completely new bridge. It took about a year to create the transport plan. The transport plan was provided by Hebo Maritime Service on behalf of the contractor combination Stipt. Hebo is a specialist in transporting objects over water, such as the new Botlik Bridge in Rotterdam. The transport plan will certainly be preserved According to Reichswater Star, the Brienenaud Bridge is interested. The arch bridges of which will be replaced and renovated in the near future. Hartelsluis, lock chamber point doors, width. 24 meters, length, 280 meters. Threshold depth below outside, 5.5 meters. Threshold depth above inside, 5.5 meters. The transport was checked by a management team which consisted of eight people from the contractor combination Stipt and Reichswater Star. They made the decisions regarding the proceedings of the transport in a responsible manner. These decisions were passed on to the captain of the tug, who was ultimately responsible for the transport.
For every step in the project, engineering was done by Hebo, by means of drawings and calculations. This was done in AutoCAD, Calculation and Stabilization Software, GHS. Working with two pontoons is challenging, according to Cohen van den Berg, project manager at Hebo Maritime Service. Because of the bridge that connects them, they affect each other, both when carouseling and when passing the bridge. Good preparation and communication were, therefore, extra important. Tugs perform a variety of tasks and their design varies accordingly. They move barges, help large ships maneuver in confined waters, tow vessels on ocean voyages. Tugs can be categorized broadly as inland, coastal or ocean going. Put simply, a tug is a means of applying an external force to any vessel it is assisting. That force may be applied in the direct or the indirect mode. In the former the major component of the pull is provided by the tug's propulsion system. The Hansen Bridge is part of the N57 National Road. The bridge from 1968 spans the Hartel Canal and the N15 National Road. The bridge includes a bascule bridge over the south side of the canal that can be opened to navigation and a cable-stayed bridge over the north side of the canal. The maximum passage width differed per bridge. The narrowest passage was at the Hansen Bridge, which was approximately 20 meters. The Hansen Bridge was also the most difficult bridge to pass, with only 4.5 centimeters clearance on both sides. When transporting the bridge through the seven bridges, only the Hansen Bridge had to be opened slightly further than is usually the case when ships pass through. For Hebo, this transport is in the top 10 of largest transports they have carried out in their history. In terms of weight, this is probably not the case according to project leader Cohen van den Berg, as that was probably the Van Brienen Old Bridge. The transport with the Suerhof Bridge could proceed up to a wind speed with peaks of up to 6 Beaufort. The speed of the transport depended on the current, 10 km per hour with the current. The speed was much lower at the Hartelkering and the Harmsen Bridge. This had to do with the passage width.
there are certainly differences between working on water and working on land. And Momut certainly provided good preparation for this project. The Suahof Bridge connects the two banks of the Hartel Canal in Rotterdam and consists of a railway bridge and a bridge for car traffic. The bridge is part of the A15. The railway bridge of the Port Railways Rotterdam is situated on the west side of the road bridge. Momot used two systems, the MJS-500 and the MJS-800, to jack up the bridge, each with four towers on a pontoon. With these systems, the bridge was hydraulically lifted and lowered again during the placement. System MJS-800 comes from the ale taken over by Momut, and can certainly be seen as the best system in the business, according to Richard Verhoof, responsible for the department, who came up with the implemented solutions. The Mega Jack 800, an innovative 800 ton jacking system, is a multi application solution that was launched in 2014 as part of Ale's innovation series. Spraying sand at Hartel Canal. The Hartel Canal is being broken up. Huge job now started. 7. March, 1967. Thompson Bridge over the Hartel Canal, under construction, the 27th of June 1968, collection, Ari Groeneveld. The placement plan was drawn up in joint consultation between Hebo Maritime Service and Momut. They sat down together to put together the most effective plan, and to present it to the bridge constructor. The placement of the anchor points for the winches was complicated due to the many cables and pipes in the ground. A barge is considered a floating workshop. The offshore construction barge must be long enough to have minimal pitch and surge response to the waves in which it normally works. Wide enough in beam to have minimum roll, and deep enough to have adequate bending strength against hog, sag, and torsion, as well as adequate freeboard.
The plate of the deck should be continuous enough to enable it to resist the membrane compression, tension, and torsion introduced by wave loading. Side plates must carry high shear, so the sides usually have a stiffener to resist against buckling. Ale's innovative solution is the Mega Jack, a revolutionary system developed to push structures of staggering weights and sizes. It's flexible, efficient design is based on individual towers that can be configured in any formation to suit the particular demands of a project, providing enormous strength and stability. Can improve floating condition, however, it reduces speed or other functions. The carouseling, i.e. turning the bridge by moving the pontoons, using the SPMT as a pivot. This technique has already been used in the construction of a 200-meter long railway bridge in Zuidhorn, the Netherlands. The type of deployment vessel will affect the operational weather window. Typically, barges are used for offshore tasks because they have large decks and high cargo capacities. However, barges can only operate in mild wave conditions. Moreover, barges do not have a propulsion system, so they are transported by a tugboat an arrangement that restricts their maneuverability, requiring more time to position. According to Hebo, approximately 2,000 meters of cable was used for winching during the turning of the bridge and the placement. This was not the first time Hebo Maritime Service used this placement method. However, it has never been done on such a large scale before. A steel arch usually consists of either solid ribs or truss ribs and bracings. The cross-section shape of the ribs is usually I-shaped, circular, box, or else, made up of steel plates. Stiffening members are required for steel arch ribs to avoid local buckling under dominate compression forces. Solid steel ribs are mainly used in arches spanning less than 200 meters. For very small spans, I-shaped sections may be more cost-effective than box sections. However, the development of welding technologies has made box-like sections with large flexural and torsional stiffness more viable. So I section arch ribs are rarely used in modern steel arch design while the welded box members are widely used.
Self-propelled transporters. In the second half of the 20th century, a trend began that would forever change the entire transportation industry. With the first self-propelled transport modules used in shipbuilding, and the SPMT, self-propelled modular transporters, invented in the 1980s, the potential payload suddenly increased and are basically unlimited today. Today, 70% of all transports over 3,000 tons and 90% of all transports over 5,000 tons are performed on self-propelled vehicles. Thus, modular manufacturing has gained a foothold in the oil and gas industry, shipbuilding and many other sectors. There are four levels of elevation for an arch bridge, that is, the deck height, the intrados crown elevation, the springing elevation and the foundation base elevation. The design of an arch bridge is affected by appropriate selections of these elevations. The deck elevation is controlled by the vertical profile of the roads or railway lines on both banks but the structure also must provide clearances dictated by stream flow and transportation vehicles. Once the deck elevation is determined, the extrados crown elevation can be obtained by subtracting the deck elevation by the superstructure depth. Arch bridges remain popular structure types that are frequently adopted for modern bridges, even though designers now have many more structural types to choose from. Many of them are built primarily for their elegant appearance and favored by designers and owners. With the passage of time, the beauty afforded by arches will probably continue to evolve. At Momot, they were prepared to raise the bridge 8 meters. Conventional climbing jack systems have the capacity to jack 60 to 500 ton. However, Ale have designed the Mega Jack 800 to have a jacking capacity of 800 ton per tower. Therefore, increasing the available solutions to clients. The system also has a strong connection between the jacking cassettes and the jacking base, which gives the system enormous horizontal load capacity even without having a vertical load on the system. Although each jacking tower has a capacity of 800 tons, another innovative element is that multiple towers can be used together to accommodate for a range of weights and sizes of structures.
steel and CFSD arch bridges with their load-carrying bearing structures of higher strength materials have larger spanning capacity than masonry and concrete arch bridges. Spans of steel arch bridges cover the range from 50 meters to 552 meters, with either solid or truss ribs. Solid ribs are generally used for spans up to 230 meters, while truss arches should be used for spans above 300 meters, except in some special cases. The Mega Jack 800 is a computer-controlled system operated from a central control room. The remote control significantly reduces the interaction required between people and machinery. As a result, this dramatically reduces the potential safety implications and the manpower required. Radio contact is maintained throughout and tower supervisors are appointed. The engineering context parallels are often drawn between the world of SPMTs and the crane world, but it should be realized that the current generation SPMTs are equipped with an operating system, contrary to cranes, which are equipped with a fully integrated control system. Consequently, a minimum amount of engineering will always be required. The Mega Jack 800 is containerized in every aspect of the design. All components have been designed and built to fit into standard ISO shipping containers to ensure that the shipment of the system is as time and cost effective as possible for the client. This also means that the system can be available globally. When passing the bridge there was about one meter of clearance. Cargo barges. These are barges which are towed or pushed by tugboats to transport from one location to another. These, in the majority, are flat top and bottom and are simply equipped with navigational lights, fair leads and towing points. A small proportion of these barges are designed to be submerged so as to pick up floating cargoes. Carouseling on the fast-flowing water, because of the simultaneous operation of winches and the SPMTs, made the operation of the placement a challenging. 
but successful process for Hebo Maritime Service. For the lowering, called jacking down, a guide frame was used. For jacking down, the jack-up systems and the ballast installations of the pontoons were used. It was an interesting job for Momut because of the various techniques, equipment and requirements that had to come together in the project. Nevertheless, communication was the most important factor in this project, because several parties had to work together towards the end goal. Reichswater Star is installing this temporary bridge to share the burden of traffic. And renovates the old Suerhof Bridge. Around 2030, Reichswater Star will replace the Suerhof Bridge. The intention is to reuse the temporary bridge for the replacement. <laughs> 